Hey, good afternoon, guys. It's Steve Cal5J. Hope everyone's doing okay out there today. Uh, with the 10 meter uh, contest going on, I wanted to take an opportunity to do a video real quick and talk a little bit about the waterfall display. There's a couple of things I've had some uh, some subscribers ask about uh, the uh, increasing the uh, gain, I believe, uh, and also the other thing I'll show you is maybe the uh, the distance. Like right now, by default, uh, I think by default when you get the radio, the spectrum frequency range is I've got it set to 50 kilohertz. So what that means is on both sides of the center frequency I've got 25 kilohertz on this side 25 kilohertz on this side but by default the radio so what I did here is I pressed the menu setup key and I use the multi key and I'm going to highlight setting number 116 uh, span frequency and I'm going to change it to the default. Right now I've got it set to 50. So remember on the menu setup, anything you see in blue text is the default. So let me demonstrate real quick. We're going to select this one. I've got it circled in blue. And when I turn this, 100 kilohertz is the default. You see how that went to a kind of a dark purple? When I press the enter button now, you see how that's a dark purple. So that's the default. So let's, dem let's take a look at what that looks like. Now I've got 50 kilohertz on this side and 50 kilohertz on this side. So I've got a total of 100 kilohertz. So you can see a whole lot more. Uh, this is the default, but let's say, for example, if I want to change it back to my setting, which is 50 kilohertz. Go back to menu setup, press the select button again, change it to 50. Now you see we have 25 on this side, 25 on this side. That makes 50 kilohertz all the way across. Let's take a look at another setting. The other setting they have is 200 kilohertz. And of course 200 kilohertz is going to be much wider. So now we have 100 kilohertz on this side and 100 kilohertz on this side. So what that means now is you've got a much wider window to look at. The signals are going to be a lot more smaller, more condensed, because of the resolution is not as good or as high. Uh, but the, the, the volume of display area is much, much higher. So even if we wanted to change this to, press set up again, say if we wanted to change it to 500, you could even do that. And now you can see, you know, pretty much the entire band. Uh, you've got traffic all the way across 10 meter and even if we bat, we we move up the frequency you'll see this is moving um, and again there look at all the signals you have to kind of let them sort themselves out but you can see you've got traffic all over the, the the downside to this is it's a little harder to to zero in on these signals uh, so that's why I like to have it set to 50 and then at 50 now I've got much, much higher resolution uh, that I can easily, easily dial into these signals. So, it's too busy, it's really busy. So anyway, that's one thing I wanted to show you was the frequency response going in either direction of the center frequency. And this by chance, just so you know, this where you see this right here, that's the center frequency, that's the display you see right here. The other thing that you might be of interest in is the attenuator and then the IPO AMP1 and AMP2 settings. So let's go through, uh, let's talk about what the attenuator does. If I press the FM list button and I locate the ATT, The ATT, when it's turned on, it's going to drop the signal by about 12 dB, which is roughly about 2 S units. So the attenuator, when I turn on the attenuator, if you notice now, you'll see the, uh, the uh, intensity of the uh, smoke trails there. If I turn on the attenuator, his signal is going to start dropping. Attenuator's on. So now he's not going all the way over to 9 now. He's probably going to maybe hit 5. But there's a lot of trend. And see, the, uh, the waterfall display is hardly showing anything. That's with the attenuator on. So that's going to reduce 
your visibility of any of these uh, signals in here. So if I turn the attenuator back off, now, now you notice now, now you start to see this waterfall intensity again. So the attenuator is going to drop your receive signal by about two yes s units, and it will also reduce the uh, the uh, signal that you see down here in the waterfall portion. So you see the attenuators on. We have very little signal. Now let's turn the attenuator off. Now let's talk about the IPO AMP1 and AMP2. I've done some videos on this before, but let me just kind of give you a demonstration of what the uh, these three settings do. IPO is a standard default gain setting for the radio. Uh, that's for normal listening. Uh, they have a second one called AMP1 which provides about uh, 10 dB which is roughly about 1.6 S units. Then they have an AMP2 which is going to take us up about 20 dB which is about 3.2, 3.3 S units. So let me demonstrate. So with the IPO amp, which is the normal default, you always want to work with IPO because that is the normal gain uh, processing system for the FT9920. That's a normal system, so when you get a signal with an S9, that's truly an S9 signal. It's not, it doesn't have any attenuation on it, it doesn't have any gain uh, from amp 1 or amp 2. So I like to rec I always work in IPO because that way when I give signal reports, it's truly what they're getting. And of course, I do leave the uh, attenuator off uh, unless they're completely overpowering me. So I leave the attenuator off and I leave it in IPO. But let's take a look when I turn on AMP 1. Let's notice the signal. I'm going to turn on AMP 1 and notice what happens to the waterfall. AMP 1. So we've added about 1.6 S units. But notice what happens with the waterfall. It becomes a lot more... Uh, packed because now we're bringing that signal in about 1.6 s units so you see how much thicker it's getting much more intensity now if i take it to ip amp 2 that's going to give us about 20 db gain so let's do that real quick amp 2 notice what happens now you notice the peaks go higher here in the spectrum portion of the display and then in the waterfall display, they go, they go much, much thicker because now we're really, really bringing in that signal. Now let's take it back to IPO again. IPO again now, in the spectrum portion of the display here, the signals have calmed down a little bit. And the smoke trails or the, the waterfall portion of it is, is also gone down. So that's, that's what's going to happen if you turn on IP, uh, IP1 or excuse me, AMP1, you'll see a much, uh, a little bit stronger reading in the spectrum portion of the display. If you turn on AMP2, you'll see a much, much more increased display. So that's how all that works. So rule of thumb, if in doubt, just leave it in IPO, attenuator off, and you're good to go. Let me show you one other thing that's pretty cool. Uh, I have found, I enjoy working on AM. And I have my FL rig set up for AM. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to 2900. I've made contacts here. So I'm going to start calling CQ, particularly if the, if the upper sideband is just completely full and you can't get any traffic. And me, I can only talk on 10 and 6 meter um, HF. I'm going to start making calls on 2900 and basically the one setting you need to pay attention to is your mic gain. Uh, I have mine set to 55 which seems to work pretty good. Now you got to remember in AM uh, you're, you're not going to have your speech processor or any of those things going on uh, and so forth. You have your equalizer on but you don't have the processor in AM so I do leave the equalizer on with the uh, mic gain set at about 55 and that gives me real good signal reports and I do leave the little little thing here on this little uh, trouble boost thing they call it and these are my, my settings for AM so it's kinda new but I'm gonna start calling CQ uh, probably uh, you know I'm gonna start call randomly calling so uh, if anyone wants to try AM with 10 meter being wide open it's like a present You've got 2,900 to 2,900. CQ to AM, CQ to AM, Victor Alpha 3, Mike Bravo Mike. Kilo India 5, Juliet, Uniform, Foxtrot. 
Hey, very good. Victor Alpha 3, Mike Papa, Mike, good afternoon. The name of uh, the call sign here is Kilo India 5, Juliet, Uniform, Foxtrot. That's Kilo India 5, Juliet, Uniform, Foxtrot. The name here is Steve, and our QTH Abilene, Texas. Go ahead. Okay, uh, I think I got the Kilo India 5, Juliet, Foxtrot. That's what I heard there. Yeah, very good, very good. Uh, conditions are starting to drop a little bit, but I got your call sign, Victor Alpha 3, Mike Papa Mike. QSL? Yes, Victor Alpha 3, Mike Papa Mike. Roger, roger. Yeah, very good. Sounds good. Well, very good. Well, I'll let you run. I'm just doing a quick training video here on the 991A. Thank you for coming back, making the CQ call. I was able to demonstrate uh, AM, which is kind of one of those uh, portions of the band that doesn't get a lot, a lot of activity. But uh, thank you very much for coming back to me. I may have lost him there. Okay, cool. All right, AM, so take advantage of it. I, I, it's just like talking when you were on Citizen Band Radio. That was AM, but this, you know, this AM, you know, it's, it's, it's ham, and, and it, it's great. All right, hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, hey, come talk to me on 2900 AM. I'll be calling CQ there, 73. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Hope you enjoyed the video.